Welcome to King Says So, a channel that advocates for one Africa, one land, one Africa, one language, one Africa, one currency, one Africa, one army. I wish to witness Africans all around the world united as one in our lifetime. Enjoy. Uh, our contribution will be curtailed or limited to the legal fraternity. Uh, particularly, uh, we're going to be contributing regarding the legislatives, which are still uh, oppressive and then have been not been changed to allow young professionals in the legal fraternity to, to participate and then to build up their careers. Because uh, as things still stand, uh, the race is still a contributing factor uh, for the success of professionals in the legal fraternity. The race issue is still the same because most of the in, the, in, in most professional uh, spaces uh, they are still dominated by a certain race and then it's, it's not easy for a black child to penetrate in those spaces without being uh, approved by those who are already in occupation of the spaces or if you are aligned with them other than that it's still it's still a difficult uh, way to, to to get into yeah i will say so far so good uh, the eff is doing well and then it's giving the the most support that is needed by black professionals. Like in our firm, we have been doing a lot of cases which has been referred by EFF. So we really appreciate the contribution that they are doing. Uh, so yeah, we can say the EFF is doing very much well. What's up ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy King King 053, Mr. Easy Imali Nengi and we back at it again with another one. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to excuse me for this week, I think, um, because I'm in a place um, by the name of Calfinia, Carnival right now. I'll be going to Calfinia on Wednesday and I'm having network problems and the guest houses where I'm sleeping don't have Wi-Fi. So I'm struggling with that also. So excuse my absence on the on the on the channel, but I was slotting videos as much as I uh, I can. Um, yesterday I did a small uh, shots, and it took forever to download a one minute clip. So I don't know when you guys are going to get this one, but uh, anyway we keep on hustling without complaining. Um, guys, I want to speak quickly about the 2024. Uh, EFF People's Manifesto consulting consulting meeting with professionals. I was very impressed with how the EFF conducted itself when it comes to this consultate, consulting professionals uh, meeting because I told you guys it is very important that the political parties strategize themselves in a way where they can position themselves to get new votes. And one of the, the, the big numbers of people who don't vote is professionals. Why don't they vote? Professionals, they don't vote because they are well off. They are the upper middle class people. They don't need to, they don't, they don't care who is in government because their salaries are good. They are living uh, uh, quite comfortably, so um, they care about politics, but they don't. It, it doesn't bother them. They've got inverters at home, solar panels, um, you know, children going to beautiful schools and all that. So what the EFF has done is to say we are calling professionals from all all industries to come: nursing, health industry, um, legal uh, faculty, uh, finance faculty, like everyone from from all across the, the board of professionals come guys let's sit down and let us hear your thoughts let us hear your contributions to the eff what is the advice that you guys are giving us as the eff and where do you want us to what what is it that you want us to work on which was very important for me i'm very impressed i said every political party should be having events such as this every month going going to the elections of 2024 and EFF has had elections I've had such events every month non-stop I can speak about so many of them this will turn into an EFF channel of which I don't mind so let's just quickly listen to some of the inputs that the 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 the, the audience the audience 
who are not EFF members, some of them, uh, most of them who are not EFF members. In fact, we were shocked to even see the, the public protector there. You know, we're still addressing her as the public protector because her term is actually finishing next week. So I was happy to hear that um, we suddenly Josie addresses her still as the public protector. And I'm very happy they did not invite the acting public protector, which is a big statement by the EFF, by the way, not to invite the current acting public protector, but to back this public protector who was pushed and fired just a month away from her serving a seven full a uh, seven year full term. So let's just quickly listen to the engagements and I'll just play snippets and snippets here and there, guys, and then I'll come back for more reviews. Prepared. They are worse off than the current nurses in the system. <laughs> I bet my life on it. <laughs> Another challenge that we have, I don't understand my role as a nurse educator for the reason that we're constantly increasing the intake every year with insufficient staff members, uh, not enough budget, but we're increasing the intake of nurses, teaching them why, because we don't have room to absorb them. So we're training all these nurses using all these valuable resources and we were pushed, especially during COVID, we were pushed to start this course as soon as possible. But we, the current students the, that's finishing now, there's no place for them. There's no plan. We're doing very well. Uh, that, that crisp is very good. Let's keep it like that. Excellent. We're not doing very well. <clears throat> Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Makwande Chala. I'm from the city of Johannesburg, working as an environmental health practitioner, a profession that is mostly sidelined, that is mostly not known f for anything. And I wanted to maybe outline a few things for EFF to consider. Maybe it will save, once EFF becomes government, once you guys come into government, you will save a lot of money if you take care of a, the, the profession called environmental health. Environmental health is mostly more on prevention is better than cure. But it's, it is real estate ownership that answers, especially when you've got land in trust that's not uh, benefiting communities on the ground. And... Um, Coupled with that, as an accountant, I've, I'm a bit sympathetic to this, and uh, advocate Noe Toby has written about this in his book, is that there is a real tension here. Um, the land is held in collateral with the banks, so we know this, and uh, some people have quoted how much exposure this is, but depositors and pensioners are exposed, and that is the public interest. So I am in a dilemma to say, how do we balance this exposure then do we go wholesale which can then threaten real you know public interest on one hand or do we do case by case as advocates uh Tobi says in his book and then we take forever and never really get this to resolve these are just questions that keep me awake at night and finally on the land is um most people are actually saying the commercial farm farmland focus is 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 misguided considering that urban land hunger is, is, is what's currently pressing and the insecure tenor in the former homelands. I, I'm really keen to hear what the EFF has taken that because I'm from the peri-urban slash rural in KZN and I, I, I do think there's a connection, but also I can see that urban land hunger is pressing. What do we do with this? And then finally... <coughs> EFF is so strategic, guys. I hope you guys can see what is going on here. You know... Floyd Shibangu and um, Dr. Mbunsan and Rosie, they did a great job running this meeting. To get all those professionals there, you can see how well they were prepared in terms of the food, um, the merchandise and everything that they needed to have to, to make this event a success. And um, for me, to get all of these people in the room, you know, 
Uh, the, the DA is failing to do that. The ANC is failing to do that because the ANC knows they'll only get criticism. The DA will also get criticisms because remember they have shown us as Africans that they don't want an African leader. So many people are very skeptical. I'm talking about many Africans are very skeptical of voting for the DA because of what they did. And the worst thing that happened to the DA is that the PA emerged and it took most of its colored votes. And then the white votes ran back to um, the Freedom Front. So it, it is something that's not good for the DA. But the EFF got these professionals in a room. After getting them in the room, then they asked them to join. And I like how Floyd Shibangu said, he said, join now before, because we are going to take power in 2024. Join now so that when we appoint you, we don't get resistance from the ground. You know, we don't want the resistance from the ground. We want, we want people to embrace you, to say, okay, this is King. Uh, we've known him. He has joined. His membership is this, this month old or it's a year old. And he, uh, he's a professional and an expert in, in finance. That's why we're putting him as the Minister of Finance because he has got the qualification and everything. Because qualification is everything in the EFF. They are tired of cadres being deployed and they know nothing about the work. For example, the ANC employing under the radar for ESCOM killed the country. I will never stop spreading the message that Andre the Raider almost killed South Africa single-handedly, him alone. He almost killed uh, ESCOM. We are suffering because of that man today. So just wanted to do this. Did not want to, I did not want it to be too long. I just want to hear your thoughts. What do you think about the EFF bringing all of these professionals in one room and then, then asking them to join the, the, the party? In fact, I will just play out with a clip of Floyd Shimago speaking to the professionals after they have spoken. You know, it was so nice seeing so many, so, so many famous people that were there, people that are, that are really pushing uh, serious numbers in terms of their budgets and the organizations that they are they are leading it was so nice i couldn't i can't play the whole thing if you go on their youtube page or facebook page you can see the whole uh, meeting i think it's about three hours i can't play the whole things but um thank you so much guys i'll be trying to make content for you guys this week it's very difficult because of the network i'll just see how long it's gonna take me to um to upload this 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 uh specific video and then that will guide me in terms of what i need to do but i'm still going to push for the thursday nine o'clock meeting thursday nine o'clock every thursday you guys voted for it every thursday we are having a dialogue here in 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 the podcast we are speaking to each other on the comment session will be um allowing the, the the agenda will be open you guys can speak to me about gender uh, gender based violence you can speak to me about pan africanism you can speak about you can speak about uh, uh, family finances and you can speak anything that you guys want to touch on i'll be i'll be f i'll be more than willing to engage you guys on that uh, because i'll be speaking about um the the budget that we are having for december and what we could do with that money if we 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 went into December with a different mindset. That's what I want to come in because African people have got a tendency of overspending in, de in December. We're going to be speaking about that, guys. I hope you guys are excited about that. Let me play out with this clip of Floyd Shibango, the deputy president of the EFF, addressing the masses. Until next time, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to pray and I salute you. And then it was quite a useful uh, thing. And then the lastly, because here we're just listening to Kome saying, it's an invitation to all of you as uh, professionals and as activists. I think some, some of you must discuss amongst yourselves to say, come to the fore, let's go to Pretoria, let's go to Cape Town. Because next year we're going to be leading this government. Let some of you voluntarily come to participate with insight and depth of understanding of the sectors that you operate in. So that when we assume the responsibility of 
minister of health, minister of finance, minister of all these other responsibilities. We operate with people who are from the industry, our practitioners understand deeply just what is happening in their sectors. And this is a genuine and legitimate invitation that let's, let's, let's get closer to the movement and let's do it sooner so that all of us, our, our ground forces do not have the temptation that they came very late. So the sooner we come closer to the movement, the better we, we coordinate the campaigns, we do the work, and then we strategically deploy each other to meaningful responsibilities with, with proper understanding of the sectors that we're operating in. Because one thing that we've got to discover is that despite the fact that the, the ruling party now is inclined towards collaborationist and selling out positions, part of our problems in South Africa is the knowledgelessness of the deployees in parliament and in government. There are so many issues which could be handled differently. But these people do not know what to do. Um, there, there are so many issues. Like we, 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 we gave an illustration when we got to parliament in 2014 that you have a situation where the country is losing hundreds of billions through aggressive tax avoidance, illicit financial flows, and tax-based erosion broadly. But none of those people were aware of what that phenomenon is. And you're busy losing billions of friends, like of potential revenue, which can be utilized to empower people to give health care, to give fee-free quality education to our people. So we do not want to ascend to power with knowledgelessness. We want to ascend to power with a firm foundation of knowing just what is to be done. That is what is going to define an EFF government. And we're giving an invitation to you, so wherever you are, let's approach the branches of the EFF, let's approach the leaders to say, we want to, to begin to participate now, so that we provide meaningful leadership to our people. We must provide quality leadership to our people. We can't replace a tendency of mediocrity of the A's with another mediocrity. It has to be quality alternate leadership that inspires confidence, that knows what it is assigned to do. And that is what should be applicable to all of us. Otherwise, we really appreciate and we really deeply appreciate all the inputs that you have made here. There are platforms which we have created, the email, WhatsApp, and even Telegram channel where if there's further inputs that you want to make, you can always make those submissions and we'll always consider all of the submissions that you're going to be giving to all of us. Thank you very much. I think uh, we have come to the end of this session. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it.